We have three pieces of software that we have to deal with. RS Links, Classic, and it could be Classic or Classic Lite. Lite is the free version. That's all you need. Then we have MicroStarter. Actually, you could have RS Logics 500, MicroStarter, or MicroStarter Lite. I'm going to assume that you have MicroStarter Lite, which is free. So MicroStarter Lite is free. RS Links Classic Lite is free. And Emulate 500 is free. So I'm going to start with uh, the RS Links, and we're going to do a setup. So we go to the double-headed snake. And then we pick a driver, and we want the Slick 500 DH45 emulator driver. So I'm going to pick that, leave the default name, add new, OK. And I'm going to leave it station 0. And you could put in a station name if it flips your switch. Now, notice station number 0 through 31. That's because DH485 is a serial network that can support 32 stations, 0 through 31. Now, we're not going to do that. Also keep in mind that RS Lynx is a driver manager, and this particular driver is kind of an odd man out in that it doesn't connect between the programming platform and a serial port on your computer. It's a software loopback. So it actually in a sense goes towards a port and then loops back to another location in RAM. Just like with a Micro 800 simulator, it has a software loopback uh, Ethernet address that you can use. In this case, we're doing a DH485, and our computer is going to be zero, and then our controller is something else. So, OK. Click OK, and there you have a driver running. I close it, do an RS who, and you can see that it doesn't find anything but the workstation, which is me. So it does see itself. OK, so let's minimize that. Now let's open up. RS Logics 500 or MicroStarter or MicroStarter Lite. I'm doing this on dual screens and it's opening up on the other screen, not a problem. We're going to create a program. Now remember that the MicroStarter Lite only supports MicroLogics 1000 and 1100. You have to pick one of those if you're using Lite. And actually, as long as you pick and we'll just uh, say new, and we'll pick a 1100 Series B. Say OK. Now there's our project. OK. So this project is the personality of a Micrologix 1100. There's no reason for you to use a 1200, 1400, 1500. You can use an 1100. An 1100 has more features than the 1000. And since you're not really buying a controller, you're just using an emulator, you might as well go with the 1100 Series B. Okay, so now I have a project. Okay, I'm going to verify it. And now I'm going to save it. But I'm going to point it to my desktop. That way it's easy to find. I'm going to call it ML1100. Save. We'll minimize this and then we'll bring up, we'll open up the emulation. And this is an instance of the emulator, but it's an empty shell. So there's really nothing there other than we have set aside a chunk of RAM for the emulation. But there's no emulation there yet until we open a file. So you cannot download to this empty emulation because it's not there to find. There's no characteristics there. There's no personality. So we go find our program, MicroLogix 1100. We open it. OK, now we can assign a station number. One, remember that your uh, laptop or desktop was zero. So we'll assign this to station number one. And there are some things up there that you could change, but don't. OK, just leave it like that, and then say OK. This, and there's nothing really here to see much yet, but this emulation now has a personality. 
it looks like MicroLogix 1100 with no program in it. Because remember that we didn't create any program. We didn't create any rungs or anything or change anything. I just wanted you to see that you can start out with just a blank 1100. Okay, so right now this thing looks like 1100. And if you went to uh, MicroStarter or MicroStarter Lite, whichever you're using, and you did a com system comms, and there it is right there, see? Looks like a MicroLogix 1100. Now, that's not saying MicroLogix 1100 because I named that uh, file ML1100. But when I opened that file inside of the emulator, it became an emulation of that model of a MicroLogix. MicroLogix or RSLogix MicroStarter, which is what I have, but Lite is probably what you have, when it came up and ran the driver. See over here we're running the emulation driver. It knows to do a software loopback and it finds the emulation, it looks at it and says, oh that's a MicroLogix 1100. So really, right now RSLogix MicroStarter, MicroStarter Lite does not know the difference between a real 1100 and this emulation. And now we can download it. And go online. Now the reason that we could download it and we go in the run mode. The reason we can download it is because the processors match. And the programs match. Because remember we opened up ML1100 inside of the emulation and it became a MicroLogix 1100 Series B with a program in it called ML1100. So when we did the download, it didn't come back and say programs don't match. Do you want to upload or other options? It just went online. So here, there you have it. And this is all you need in order to get started. So once you are this far, then you can open up your lab project manual and start doing the projects. Now, I, I will say this, that because you don't have a digital field device simulator, in other words, you don't have toggle switches, push buttons, and lights, you don't have an actual hardware interface. But what we did was we created a chunk of code, several different program files, subroutines, that allow you some latitude in executing the digital field devices. And in the course, we make this available to you to make it a little bit simpler to do the lab project. So you should be all set at this point. Let's give a demonstration uh, of the special code that I was speaking of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this project. Remember, this is just a blank MicroLogix 1100. Then I'm going to go to the offline mode. Now I'm going to open another file. And this one is called ML11 Emulate Template or EMU Template. And what you're going to do with this file that you'll get access to it in class is that this will become the template from which you will build all of your lab projects. And we have <clears throat> three routines in here, actually four. You've got ladder two, that's the main routine. Then you've got HMI setup and inputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to setup and I'm going to make input zero a maintained switch. Input one a normally open and input two a normally closed. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to download it.
go into the run mode. Now these three files down here, we're into the setup one. Uh, the, you need to kind of pretend that they aren't there. In other words, those three files, ladder 253, 54, and 55, and I picked those numbers because they're at the far end. You can have ladder 2 through ladder 255. So I use 253, 54, and 55 just to get them as far away as I could from anything that you might want to do in your lab projects. So I'm going to go off, go back offline. I'm going to save because with the emulator you can't do online editing. So I'm going to go offline and now I'm going to create three rungs of logic. The first one is going to be Uh, input zero and it's going to turn on output zero. Now you notice I kind of cheated when I typed in the addresses. Now you're watching this before you've taken any classes so you really you really don't know exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. You don't have to understand anything you're looking at right this minute. Now I'm going to select that, control C, control V, V. And I'm going to change the addresses. And the same for the outputs. So I'm turning on three different outputs. Okay, so now I have three rungs. I'm going to verify and download. And the emulator always comes up in the remote program mode, so I'm going to select run. Okay, now notice that input 2 is already on. That's because I set it, set it up as a normally closed push button. Input 1 is a normally open push button and input 0 as a maintain switch. So keep that in mind. We could have gone and labeled them and maybe that would have made it easier for you to look at. So if I remember this is a normally closed switch input 2. So I'm going to right click and I see that it's off the screen. I'm not quite sure. Okay I know how to deal with this. We'll have to move this up because we only care about these three rungs anyway. We don't care about the rest of them. We'll move this up. Now I'm going to do a right click toggle bit. So what I'm doing is I am toggling this bit memory. So watch that bit. Right now it's highlighted green which means that that bit is on. It went off and one second later it came back on. So it behaved like a momentary, normally closed push button. If you're not depressing a normally closed push button, it is on. Okay, so I'm going to toggle it that makes it go off and then it's going to come back on by itself, just like a push and release. This one is a normally open push button, so when I do the same thing, it's going to go on and then go back off after one second. This one is a maintained. When I turn on, it comes on and stays on. So I have to turn it on and off with separate toggles. So what we do with this special code, and there's quite a few rungs involved, is we give you the ability to set up your inputs as normally open, normally closed, or maintained. And this greatly enhances your ability to do the labs with the emulator. Now this uh, code, as I said, is available uh, through the course. I think that we have a manual available that comes with an electronic storage element like a thumb drive or a disk that has micro starter light, emulate 500 and RS Lynx light on it, as well as the template 
that you can load into your emulator and have this capability. I would show you the code, but at this point you haven't taken the course. It's not going to make any sense other than you can see it works. That's a normally closed push button. Toggle it, it goes off and then back on after a second. Now I have a timer in there that's actually controlling how long it went off. And, but it's the same timer that I use for the normally open button. You push it, it went on for one second and went off. And then the maintained, toggling on, stays on forever until you toggle it back off. Excellent.